Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Peace to men of goodwill. Peace to men that are looking for peace. Protection and preservation to people who are looking for peace of God upon their life. Peace, peace, peace. Hallelujah. There are people that are looking for God, but their heart is far from God. There are people that are looking for God, and they will seek this God, and they will get this God. The heart is very open before the mighty hand of God. God Almighty will show them favor and God will show them mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are people who are seeking for God, but their heart is too far from God. I advise you, if you want to serve God, serve Him with all your hands. If you want to serve God, don't have any other God. Dismiss any other power. Dismiss any other form. Dismiss any other influence. Serve God with all your hands. Serve God with all your thoughts. Serve God with all your mind. Serve God with everything you have in you. And the great grace of God will come upon your life. And the merciful hand of God will come into your life. And the glory of God will come into your life. God does not need any help from any man to be worshipped. He is a God that existed all alone. He said, I am the Lord, and beside him there is no other God. He said, even if there is any other God you are thinking about, that he doesn't know. Is it the God of your fathers? Is it the God of your ancestors? Is it the gods of your village? Whatever power is a God of heaven does not recognize such a power. Therefore, if God has said he is the Lord, and beside him there is no Savior, why bringing in and introducing another God? There are people that money has become their God. There are people that their beauty has become their God. There are people that their education have become their God. There are people that their influences have become their God. There are people that blessings and favor God has given to them have torn and become their God. It is too baffling. No, 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 no. God does not want that to be. God does not want that to exist. There are people that are seeking God. They want to serve God. They want to worship God. But their heart is far from God. What will he gain? What will he gain? All these things that sweets you now. Sin, unrighteousness, impurity, and uncleanliness, the sweet to but I tell you, rather you're going to regret about them. If you don't take a permanent life decision now, you're going to regret about it later. You're going to say, if I had known, if I had known, I would have served God and God alone. Serve God and God alone. Eternity is very close. The end of life is very close. The end of this age is very close. Serve God and serve God alone. Come out from all these things. It could be lie, it could be hatred, it could be masturbation. It could be the world. It could be fashion of this world. It could still be attachment that is holding you in bondage. You're telling lies. God created you uh, uh, with a very natural fine hair. You say, no, 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 no. I must have a long one. You're making God a liar. Come out from all these things. God created with a very beautiful finger. She said, no, I have to recreate myself. And then, why must this little thing be the thing that will separate you from God? Why are these things the thing that's going to separate you from God? I'm advising you. I want to tell you time shall come when you shall have no time again. The people in hell are pleading and calling upon the name of the Lord. They are pleading for one minute. Some are pleading for five minutes. Some are pleading for ten minutes. Some are pleading for two seconds. Some are pleading for three seconds. So that they will amend and come from where they are. Hell is a permanent hold and punishing place. Don't be deceived by any man, by any being. that God will not punish you in hell. He, many are already there. Many are already languishing there. Many are already perishing there. Many are already in shivering over there. Hell is very much real. Hell is very much real. Come out and repent now. You are halfway to Christianity, halfway to the world. You are halfway in Christ, halfway in the world. When they talk, you did it. But what do you do in secret? Do you know that every of your secret sins shall be exposed? You are a child of God in the public, but a wicked person inside. You are a child of God in the public, but and you must intervene for every pain that's done against you in the secret. Come out from all these things. Be a child of God in dark. Be a child of God in the light. In fact, when you are a child of God as light, when you go to dark, the glory of God in you will transform the darkness into light. Child of God have no hiding place. Child of God have no hiding place because the glory of God is upon his life. Wherever he go, he transforms that place. This is an hour that they that serve God shall serve him in spirit and in truth. This is a time that the people that serve God will serve him in the glory of his power, might and majesty. God is holy, God is righteous. God is true, God is real. God is loving and God is kind. He needs you to come into him. He needs you to really fall in love with him. He will do you well. Devil you are going to is a bad one. The devil will only deceive you. The devil has known that his own is granted. The devil has an awaiting day for him. The devil knows he has a day of 
punishment, a day where he will be destroyed, a day he will be chained, a day he will be put under bondage. The devil knew about that. And that's why he's trying to lure you. He's trying to pull you. He's trying to pull you to go over with, to, to hell with him. His only settled case. The devil is not sure of you because you are still alive. You can repent at any time and be a child of God. You could repent at any time and be a seed of righteousness. So the devil is not sure of you in any form, in any way. And that is why I call upon you right now. Child of God, turn to Jesus. Child of God, be a seed of God. Child of God, repent and know Jesus of Nazareth. Child of God, I want to tell you, even if you're in sin, even if you're in deep sin, God can show you mercy right now. Shall we begin to pray? Everlasting Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, ancient of the days, you are God of life, you are God of power. You are the excellent mighty King of glory, you are the Esher die. Arise in glory, arise in power, arise in might, arise in majesty. Mighty man of Allah, the everlasting Father, the Holy One of Israel. Nobody has been like you and nobody will be like you. I said, Arise, O Lord, arise, Jehovah. Arise, Elohim, arise, a lion. Speak to us right now that we shall hear the word of God and word of life. Speak to us right now that the word of God will penetrate into our heart, our spirit, soul, and body, and the glory of God will be upon our life and God shall be glorified. Speak to us as we're talking about grace and let this grace be abundant to us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We're still talking about the grace of God. Today we're talking about part seven of the great more of your grace, O Lord. More of your grace, Lord. Or more of your grace, O Lord. All we needed now is the great grace of God. Remember on Sundays we're talking about glory. And on, on the Monday and Wednesday we're talking about grace. If we can get into this new year with this truth in grace and glory. Oh, we will go far for the Lord. When the grace is there, when the glory of God is upon our life, we will go far for the Lord and we will do the work of God with the Lord and for the Lord. This is an hour that day that you worship God, you worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is the time the heaven and earth is calling upon us and saying, we will not disappoint God. We shall not fail God. Hallelujah. I pray I will not fail God. I pray you will not fail God. I pray that none of us shall fail God. Dada, we shall be together and do the work of God in honor. We shall do the work of God with regard and respect. And Christ's name alone shall be glorified, magnified, and worship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nobody is like unto him. Forever he is the lamb upon the throne. Amen. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We're talking about, I was trying to tell you about 14 things you should know about the grace. 14 things you should know about the grace of God. About the grace of God, I've told you, point one. There are notes you need to take about the grace. That the grace of God is real. Number one, I told you that grace has justified you. You are no more a sinner. The devil cannot bring you back to sin and unrighteousness again. He cannot condemn you for what you did past and years ago. No, he cannot condemn you. No, 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 no. And I told you that grace is not excuse to commit to sin. Oh, we have access to the grace of God at point four, point three, point four now. Yes, we have different type of grace. Your grace is not my grace. My grace is not your grace. There are people that are easily discouraged. That the level of grace they have, there are people that are not easily discouraged. No matter what happened to their life, they will stand and they will stand and they will stand and they will stand and do the work of God. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I've seen you online. God bless you all the way from Pakistan. God bless you. It's well with you. And all the people that are lying already, God bless you. I'm just welcoming a new person to the line. I can see my sister Maureen, a lot of you, I'm seeing you online already. From America, God bless you. From Europe, God bless you. From Asia, God bless you. From Australia, God bless you. From every part of the world where you are coming from, God will keep you and bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. What are we trying to do? We're talking, to talk about the grace of God. When the grace of God is gone out of your life, when the grace of God is gone out of your life, you are nobody. When the grace of God is gone out of your life, you are like a waterproof, just a piece of paper that A is carrying about. But when the grace of God upon you, grace of God have gotten weight, He will direct you to where you should go. Hallelujah. I told you that grace is a spirit because it coming from the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have different grace in our life. I said grace is also the gift of God. I told you that grace of God as a throne. Grace coming from the throne of God directly and directly. Yes, one can receive.
receive the grace of God in vain. That, that was where we stopped last time. The one can receive the grace of God in vain. St. Paul said that he didn't receive the grace of God in vain. He didn't re receive the grace of God in vain. And right now, what we're point, uh, uh, on the point nine, one can frustrate the grace of God. Do you know that one can frustrate the grace of God? One can frustrate the grace of God. Beloved of God, as I listen to this message, don't frustrate the grace of God. Don't frustrate the grace of God in Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ death is in vain. I do not frustrate the grace of God. May you never frustrate the grace of God. I will not frustrate the grace of God. If you don't frustrate the grace of God, I will not frustrate the grace of God. When God has an appointment with you and God has raised you for a purpose. Do you see the devil wanted Jesus of Nazareth to frustrate the grace of God? When it was time for Jesus to die, the devil came with the trial, showed him the word, showed him a lot of things. Jesus could have said, okay, let me follow the pleasure of the word. Let me follow this and that. But Jesus refused to follow anything of the life. He knew that there is eternity. He is the maker of all this. And the devil never knew he was trying to tempt. He never knew that Jesus it will get victory for us, and today we have powerful victory in Christ Jesus of Nazareth. When God has set you for a purpose, when God has created you for a purpose, when God has assigned you for a purpose, and then this is time for you to do that, and before that time, you disappoint God. You say, my mother said I shouldn't do that. My father said I shouldn't do that. And my people said I shouldn't do that. You are frustrating the grace of God. When you are listening the voice, to the voice of tradition more than the voice of God, in your village, possible people have not heard about Jesus of Nazareth. Instead of you to stand upon the word of God and tell the people of your place and say, look at what has happened. You have allowed Juju. You have allowed the shrine. You have allowed the goddess of the land to walk there. You have you are frustrating the grace of God. What is expected of you is not what is God people are saying within you and round about you. You are frustrating the grace of God. Esther would have frustrated the grace of God until when she discovered for this purpose was I said on the throne. And Mordecai had told her, Look, huh? let me tell you, you might not know that this is the purpose why you're set on the throne. Let me tell you, even if you don't get this victory, another person is going to get the victory for the Lord, and then the glory shall be to God, and then you shall be put to to shame. Have you heard it? Have you said it? I don't frustrate the grace of God. I pray you are not going to frustrate the grace of God. We shall not frustrate the grace of God. We shall uphold the grace of God. We shall move with the grace of God. We shall move with the power of God. We shall move with the mercy of God. And the great grace of God shall be upon our life. I will never frustrate the grace of God. You can confess it wherever you are. Say in the name of Jesus, I will not frustrate the grace of God. No, I will not frustrate the grace of God. I will not frustrate the grace of God. I will not frustrate the grace of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, why are you frustrating the grace of God? Why are you frustrating the grace of God? When it is time to make Jesus known, you are hiding. Oh my God. You're quarreling with everybody in the church, even the new members that come in into the church. That's the first time they came to the fellowship. That's the day you came with trouble. That was the day you came with pain. And you are shouting people say, ah, holy God. He said, what is it? What does it matter? Those people came for the first time and when they hear the way you are bumbling, when they wear you are quarreling with everybody, the way you are thundering, they say, hey, is this what church look like? They frustrate the grace of God. They fr you frustrate the grace of God. One man was eager and he only was a Hindu. He was trying to look and say, where can I see a Christian? He read the Bible, but he has never seen a Christian before in those days. He was looking for a child of God. He was looking for a Christian. He was looking. He said, God, give me a Christian. Show me a Christian. I've read about Christian. I've never heard about Christianity, but I've read about Christianity. I've read that in the Bible. Oh, the Christian should be like Christ. The man was so eager. The man was praying. I want to be a born again child of God. I said, God, whatever I say, Christian, he will lead me to Christ. Whatever I say, Christian, I will love him. Whatever I say, Christian, the man was so on. The man was so powerful in the spirit, looking for a Christian. And one day he was in a bus. And two people were fighting in a ball. After fighting and quarreling, he was trying to make peace to them. And this one said, look, I'm a Christian. The other one said, look, I'm a Christian. The man said, wow! 
Is this what Christianity look like? The man made up his mind and said, I will remain a Hindu all the days of my life. I will never be a child of God. For Christians are not real. For Christians don't do, uh, don't, don't do what the Bible asks them to do. The man lived and died a self-righteous person because the Christian he saw first time as Christian frustrated the grace of God. Are you frustrating the grace of God? This is not a laughing matter. This is a very serious issue. That for how long shall we frustrate the grace of God? For how long shall we show the world that Christ is not real? Look at the quarreling in the church of Jesus Christ. Look at the GF preaching another thing. The other Jesus is preaching a different thing altogether. The other one is waiting when the whole world will become a member of his church. All this is frustrating the grace of God. You see to that, somebody came to a man of God and said, Sir, I want you to pray for me. And was telling him about his financial setback, financial failure, financial this and this and that and that. And the man told, oh, are you a tither? He said, yes, sir. I do pay my tithe. The man told, oh, you pay your tithe. He said, go to that church where you pay your tithe and let the people you pay that tithe into be the one to pray for you. No, it shouldn't have been like that. He's a child of God. You could have prayed for him every day and every way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that when you don't pay tithe to me that I cannot pray for your progress. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible said. If we remember and know that the church is the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If we can know and believe from the depth of our heart that the church belongs to Jesus of Nazareth, then we shouldn't be making a lot of blunders that we're making today. We should have been making a lot of mistakes we're making today. Many of us are frustrating the grace of God. The grace of God. Somebody came with the mother. The mother was a born, uh, claims to be a child of God. But this lady said the mother is a, sad, is a sadist. Every day he quarrel with people in the school, he quarrel with people in the office, he quarrel with people everywhere and every time. In the house, he is quarreling with me for smarting, he will pick a friend, he will curse me. Then in prayer, he will pray more than any other person. Sister, why? Brother, why? Why are you doing like this? Why are you frustrating the grace of God? Can somebody look at you and say Christ in you? Can somebody look at you and say, I want to be a born again child of God? Can somebody look at you as an example of believers? Can somebody look at you and say, I want to go to heaven? Can somebody look at you and say, you are a sinner? of God and you are a child of God. Why frustrating the grace of God every day? Do you think that you have all the time in the world? This person is not coming to church because you are the one. Why are you frustrating the grace of God? There was a soul that will minister to one day this girl, girl have her life to Christ. I was so happy. I directed that a particular fellowship. I said, this is close to you. Be attending the church and God of heaven will bless you. Sometime you can come to my office. I will see you. And the girl was full of zeal. The girl was full of gladness that she has given her life to Jesus. So her old life was waved away. After some time, I couldn't see her again. I said, what happened? She's no more going to that church. I called the pastor, called the members of the church. She's no more coming. Since two months, she stopped. I said, no, no. Why should this happen? Why should she not be coming again? No, 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 no. I was not happy. I managed to visit her. I said, what happened? My sister, he began to tell me of one old Christian that came, molest her in the church, quarrel with her in the church, push her in the church, wanted to fight her in the church. And this girl is a very quiet girl. The people there were holding the older believer and said, no, nah, don't pick this quarrel. The girl said, what do you say they told you about me? I didn't say such a thing. I mean, I, I can't say that. Even if that happened, I'm not a new creature. I'm in Christ. He said, even if you like, be a new anything. You're a liar. You are wicked. He was quarreling with the new convert and that was how the girl dropped out of faith. That was how the girl dropped out of faith. Why are you frustrating the grace of God? Why are you frustrating the grace of God? There are so many unbelievers who have fought and frustrated the grace of God. Somebody rose up in those days in the land in Germany and say that he is going to put the Bible off every house. In France, he's going to put the Bible off every house. Do you know that this particular man was going from house to house because he felt he was a very big soldier. He was a very big army with authority. He was going from house to house, you know, burning Bible, burning Bible. But before he could burn half of the Bible, the man died. He couldn't continue. You cannot frustrate the grace of God. Are you hearing me? Stop frustrating the grace of God. The grace of God is sufficient. And the moment the man died, the printing press was invented, and the, 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 the people of printing press came to that town and they bought the building of that man that had been destroyed. The children sold the building of that man that had been destroying the Bible, and the first Bible was printed in that country from the house of that man. You cannot frustrate the grace of God.
Let me tell you, grace is given to you. You didn't do anything about it. You didn't pay anything about it. It could still be taken away from you. St. Paul said, I don't frustrate the grace of God. I don't use my grace and say that because of this. So many of us ministers of the gospel, we use our grace as a means of dealing with people. Look, as a authority restored to me, as a man of God, I curse you. You shall not be well with you. No, no, no. The Bible says, bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. Let us stop doing all this abracadabra that we are doing. We fear that grace is, we can be merchandised. You see what is happening today? A lot of pastors are taking people to shrine. They are taking them to the water. They are coming, bringing one power or the other power to them. This is wrong. This is wrong. A man of God went to the mountain and came back with a particular soup. He told the wife and said, this soup, the prophet in the mountain gave us this soup and said, bath with it. When have the soup come to replace the blood of Jesus Christ? Look at what you're teaching your congregation. Look at what you're telling people to do. Is it not Jesus Christ of Nazareth? He said, in my name. When have you asked you to add soup? When have you asked you to, uh, asked you to add that cream? Who is the prophet that is doing all this to you? Who is the prophet that is beyond Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus is the highest and the last prophet so far. Every other one can operate under prophetic utterance, which is real, which is among the night gift of the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, don't change the word of God. Stop frustrating the grace of God. Why can God trust in you? And before you understand it, look at you. Look at where you are today. May God help you not to frustrate the grace of God. And may the Lord help me not to frustrate the grace of God that we shall never ever frustrate the grace of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of things people are doing to frustrate the grace of God. But my prayer is that this grace shall not be frustrated anymore. For the great grace of God will keep you, control you, be your portion and possession in Jesus' name. Another thing again, which one can do about the grace of God? Why yes, about the grace of God, point 10, one can fall short of the glory. One can fall short of the glory. Do you know that a lot of children of God and a lot of men of God are falling short of the glory of God? Hey, that is why don't allow any man of God you see to lay hand on you. Be led by the Spirit and know that he is still alive. Many people are falling short of the glory of God. And that is why they are preaching heresies. And that is why they are preaching things outside the word of God. And you are thinking, oh, because he was a child of God in the morning does not mean he is a child of God in the evening. Because he was a child of God yesterday does not mean that he is a child of God this night. Do you hear what I am saying? The grace of God is upon our life. The grace of God will take us home by the divine mighty power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. This grace will take us uh, 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 to, to where God is looking. Hallelujah. And where God is expecting us to be. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Hebrew. One confession of the glory of God. You see Hebrew chapter 15. Okay, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. One can still feel short of the glory and can still be walking, thinking that God is still with him. When the glory left Samson, Samson never knew that grace had left him. The glory has left him. Looking diligently, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defied. Let there be no that is that will spring wickedness, that will spring, spring evil wars. Let it not be the one that will come unto you. He saying that looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. There are people that the grace of God is no more with them. There are people that are falling short of the standard. They have asleep them. They are now in the world. They are not of Christ anymore. The glory of God is no more in their life. The measure of God is no more on their life. They are no more preserved. They are no more protected by God Himself. They are outside the will and wish of God. They have gone and they have gone astray. And then because of the old old whatever they have, old wave they have, old glory they have, old grace, they now come out again and begin to settle and people begin to listen to them. When people talk, listen to them and know how afraid they are still with the Lord. There are people that met God 10 years ago and that was when God departed. There are people that stayed with God 20 years ago, 15 years ago. That was the last time the glory and the grace of God touched their life. There are people who are still fresh in the Lord. There are people God is talking to them and they are the people bubbling in the spirit 
Spirit, preaching the truth of the Word of God. What am I trying to say? Anybody you see should not lay hand on you. Every message you see, you will not listen to. There are some messages you will listen to, they will expire you. There are ones you will listen, they will inspire you. Go to those ones that will inspire you and not the one that will expire you. Are you hearing me, child of God? Don't Make sure you don't fall of the glory of God. Make sure you don't fall of the glory of, uh, of the grace of God. Look at all Christians, look at this thing now. As I'm having this thing as an example in my hand, a child of God can continue moving, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Before understanding, look at him here. He felt he's making it. He doesn't take correction. Bitterness is there. Anger is there. Provocation is there. He has gone out of glory. He has gone out of grace. So before understanding, look at him falling on. And the grace is still standing, but he's no more standing with grace. He has fallen and fallen down. It takes God again. It takes humility. It takes prayers of brethren consigned to live some such a one up again and bring such a one up to glory again, to grace again, so that you stand on the platform of grace. Many of us don't know that grace is a platform of God. Not everybody living on earth is under the grace. The people who are born again, who are wanting to obey God and living by the grace of God, they are people under the platform of grace. Don't let this grace fail of you. Don't waste this grace that God has given to his people. Don't any grace in you. Don't frustrate it. Remember, one can frustrate the grace of God that will want we just discussed and one can fall short of the great grace of God. St. Paul said that some people also it's a looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. We're going to be very, very careful. We're going to be very extra careful so that we don't fall of the grace of God. May the mighty hand of God help us, help you and help me, so that we're not going to fall short of the disgrace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the God and God. And beside him there is no savior. And another thing I want to still let you know about grace again. And right, the eleven point, the member I told you about fourteen things you need to know about the grace of God. Okay. Uh, another thing I still want to let you know more about grace so that you will really know. Remember, I've told you you didn't do anything to inherit it. You did not do anything to inherit this grace. It's all about God. It's all about His mercy. It's all about His, you know, out of His candid, flowing mercy. He said, let me have compassion a man. Let me have compassion a man. And God have chosen to show you mercy. And God have chosen to show you compassion through the mighty grace of Christ that is existing in you. To God our Lord be other glory in the name of Jesus. All grace. Every grace, all grace come from God. Any grace that is not from God is not a godly grace. It's not grace at all. Look at what the Bible says in First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 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 But the God of all grace. Have you seen the God of all grace? God is God of all grace. Any grace you're having is from God. Grace to preach the word of God is from God. Grace to live a holy life is from God. Grace to prosper is from God. Grace to sing is from God. He said, but, God, but the God of all grace, who had called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and said to you. Have you seen that what I want to take here is that God is all grace. Every grace you're talking about, every grace one is operating from, is from God. That's why every grace must operate under humility. Every grace must, uh, uh, must definitely walk under holiness and purity. So any, the source of every grace is from God. Therefore God is a holy God and God is a pure God. God is a righteous God. God is a clean God. Therefore every grace must lead you to cleanliness. Every grace that leads you to sin is not grace of God. Every grace that leads you to fighting is not the grace of God. Every grace that leads you to fighting, quarreling, division, that means you have gone outside the system of God. You are falling short of the glory of a or you are frustrating the grace of God upon your life. So what are we trying to say, children of God? What we are trying to say right now is that this God of grace, every grace comes from Him. Any kind of grace you desire, you can get back to Him. He is the, he, 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 he is the God of grace. And the glory and grace is from the Lord. And Jesus was filled with glory and grace. That's why he could go far and make much impact for, for, for the work of God that was in his hands. Are you hearing me, child of God? So what we're trying to say is that you will never frustrate the grace of God. I'm trying to tell you no and things you need to know about the grace of God. Remember, I told you we're going to end this teaching by Wednesday, which is next tomorrow. I told you to write four prayer requests. 
of what you want God to do for you for the year. Four tangible things, four real things you want God to do for you today. So that by the time we're ending this, by next tomorrow, we're going to pray for people. A lot of people already have written their prayer requests. I have noted them down. If you have chance, do them today. By next tomorrow, we're compiling them. Finally, by next tomorrow, we're going to pray for people. And God of heaven and earth who has been doing it is going to do it in their life. And Christ them shall be glorified. Send the message through my, uh, my, my, uh, my WhatsApp. Yes, send the message through WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is always here. Plus 23480. 3, 4, 0, 4, 0, 4. Plus 23. Yes. Plus 23803504. That's my WhatsApp number. Feel free to send it from any part of the world. We're going to make a decree and pray together for you. So that this grace will follow you this year. This grace will follow you this year. The year we are in is a shaking year. It's a very tough year. It's a year a lot of negative things will happen. A lot of things will happen. Many people will lose their faith. Many people will shake from their faith. Remember the message I preached some time ago. I said, don't deceive me with the Bible. There are people who will appear like children of God. There are people who will appear like angel of light. But inside of them, they are demonic. They are devilish. They are outside the will of God. So we call upon the name of the Lord to show us mercy. Every grace is from the God of heaven and earth. Every grace is from God in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, grace of God will keep you. Grace of God will show you mercy. Grace of God will show me mercy. Grace of God will favor me. And grace of God will favor you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Another point I want to make here about grace again is that grace could be multiplied. Hallelujah. Grace could be multiplied. Remember, I told you we're going to talk about types of grace. There are different types of grace. That's why I told you your grace is not my grace. But that grace you have could be multiplied. Your grace could be multiplied. In the book of Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace could be multiplied. That's one thing about grace. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Do you see that grace could be multiplied unto you? Maybe you are singing and God see your faithfulness. He will multiply your grace. Maybe God give you a gift of healing and you are using it to pray for people without charging them money. Oh, you are moving ahead. God will increase the grace of God in you. Yeah, I pray in any you are preaching the word of God and life are being God will multiply the grace in you. May the grace in your life be multiplied. May the grace of God in your life be multiplied. In the morning, let it be multiplied. In the evening, let it be multiplied. In the afternoon, let it be multiplied. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, grace shall be multiplied in you. Day in, day out, the great grace of God shall be multiplied. When you are making use of the grace in you already, God will multiply it more. And that is why ask people whom God is mightily using today. They are in secret with the Lord. They are in prayers with the Lord. They are in truthfulness with the Lord. They are in cleanliness with the Lord. They are in prayers with the Lord. They are in fasting with the Lord. And God has seen their zeal. And God said, no, the grace needs not to dry. This one is not frustrating the grace of God. This one has not fallen short of the glory of the grace of God. I am going to multiply. And before I understand it, there will be multiplication. Somebody listening to me right now, may God multiply the grace of God in your life. May God multiply the grace in you already. There's a height you want to get to. There's a height you have been desiring to go to. God will take you to the height. God will lift you to the height. You will receive that heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And grace shall be multiplied in your life. It's important to these people, grace be multiplied unto you. Oh God, we need the multiplication of the grace. That's why we say we need more of the grace. Multiplication of the grace is more and more and more and more and more of the grace of God in your life. Let this grace come so that the things God, where God has blessed you, you will be flying like eagle. No more struggling, no more doing that, that, but you will fly and move ahead when the grace of God is multiplied in your life. When the grace is multiplied in your life, you will not have, uh, you know, hold up anywhere. You will flow on, you will move on, you will go ahead and you will preach Jesus of Nazareth and the word of God will come out of your heart. You will be directed by the Holy Ghost. You will not speak of your own because you are speaking out of grace. It's not by your power, it's not by your making. You have been crucified already with Christ. It's not more you that is living, but Christ is living his life in 
in you. That is the life of grace. That is the life of sanctification. That is somebody have already died. And Christ is living in him. He's no more him. He's not that provoked person. He's not that angry person. He's not that person that can fight at any time. He's not that person that will drop a bad word and say, I'm sorry. I said, no, no. When grace is there, you become matured. When grace is there, your eyes will be open. When grace is there, you seek more of God. When grace is there, you will never be satisfied for what you have done because you will want to do more. And more, and more, and more, and more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another point I still want to make about grace in your life. I still want to make another point about grace in your life. Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to do about the same grace that is given to us again. I've told you already that grace could be multiplied in our lives already. And there are more and more things God is talking to us about grace. When you know this far about grace. Another point I want to make again, which is point that then about grace is that you can grow in the grace of God. You can grow in the grace. A little grace is given to you and you continue growing, you continue growing, you continue growing, you continue growing. And when God says that you're growing, he will multiply it already. Hallelujah. In the book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be all the glory, both now and forevermore. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means Jesus and glory, Jesus, grace and glory cannot be differentiated. They cannot be separated. When you are in grace, you are in Christ Jesus. It is Jesus you are into that gives you the grace to go on and to go ahead and multiply. May this great grace come upon you. May this great grace come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Grow in the grace. I want to grow every day in the grace of God. I want to grow in the morning in the grace. I want to grow in the afternoon in the grace. I want to grow in the evening in the grace. I want to grow all the days of my life in the grace. Every day I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to be where I was last year. I want to go higher again and higher again. Young children pray the prayer and say, Lord, the position I was in you, the glory I had ahead with you, the grace I had last year, last three, four, five years ago, let it not be the grace I will dwell upon. I want to go higher and higher in the Lord. May the Lord help you to go higher and may he help me to go higher in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally today, on the point you need to know about grace of God. About the grace of God. Yes, that's another point Babo is talking to us. And the word of God is telling us about grace of God, which is very, very wonderful. Many have already done it and they have gone. Many have already done it and they have gone. And what is that one? Oh, my, 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 my. One can misuse the grace of God. What can misuse the grace of God? May God help me not to misuse the grace. May he help me not to misuse the grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the book of Jude verse 4. You know Jude is just only a chapter in the Bible. Jude verse 4. For there are certain men. Jude chapter 4. Jude chapter Jude verse 4. It's just only one chapter, Jude. Uh, it's just only one chapter. So Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men creeping in and away who were before of old ordained to his condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. They misuse the grace. They use less the grace. The grace was given to them to make use of it properly. They turn it into a taint of merchandise. They use the name of Jesus to make money. They use the name of Jesus to do a manner of evil. No, 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 no. Don't misuse the grace of God. If you have misused the grace of God, you can come back today. I kept mis examining myself, Daddy. In any way, I have misused the grace of God. I want to come back to you. I want to make proper use of the grace. I want to live with the grace, move with the grace, walk with the grace, and the great grace of God shall be upon my life. And I will be who he wants me to be to the glory of God. Having given you these 14 points about the grace of God, meditate over them. We are not preaching long tonight. Just meditate over them, think about them, and then go. The grace of God will keep you. May you never frustrate the grace of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you never shut, uh, fall short of the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Realize that every grace is from God. Give God all the honor. Give him all the praises, sir. Oh, my, 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 my. The grace could be multiplied. Receive the multiplication of grace now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You can grow in the grace every day. 
reading the Bible, searching the Bible, praying, going with holy men of God and holy women of God, holy brothers and sisters, partnering with them, moving ahead with them, supporting the work of God, trying to grow every day, and the great grace of God will come upon your life. Grace could be misused. I will never misuse the grace of God. You will never misuse the grace of God. Shall we begin to pray right now? Begin to pray, begin to say, God, Daddy, you are the God of my life. You are my Savior. You are the mighty man of valor. You are the rock of ages. I know I have fallen short of that standard, but give me grace now to come back again. Can you begin to tell God, in any way I have sinned against you, in anything I have done contrary, any sin I have done, is this sin of lie? Is this sin of anger? Is this sin of hatred? Sin of immorality, masturbation, sin of lies, sins of wickedness of heart, sin of unforgiveness? Begin to tell God, the Lord, I need more of your grace. I want to come above this things. I want, don't want anything to dominate over my life. I don't want to see anything to rule over my life. I need holiness, purity, and righteousness, and the great grace of God. So begin to pray. Begin to pray. Jesus can come into your life right now. If you are not yet born again, you can be born again now. If you have not taken that decision, you can take that decision. If you want to really give your life to Jesus, can you say after me? Can you say, Lord Jesus? I'm sorry I'm a sinner. Come into my life, Lord. Give me grace to be a child of God. Give me grace to live a holy life. I receive Jesus right now as my Lord and Savior. Now and forevermore. Amen. So it is. May the great grace of God come upon your life. As you give your life to Jesus, let grace come. Let his peace rule over you. Let his mercy rule over your life. And you become a seed of God and the seed of righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power to be a child of God be bestowed upon you. The Bible says many that receive him to then give you power to become children of God. Even they that believe in his name. That is John chapter 1 verse 12. Let it be your portion. The Bible said no other name given under heaven where but we must be saying. Except the name of Jesus in as of the apostle chapter 4 verse 12. Let this name come upon you. Let the name transform you. Let this name renew you. And may Jesus be the King and God and Lord of your life forevermore in Jesus name. Let's pray for everybody. Begin to pray and say, God, help me not to frustrate your grace. I don't want to frustrate your grace. I don't want to fall short of thy grace. I want to grow more in grace. I don't want to misuse the grace in any form, in any way. Since it is given to me by another, there must be an instruction of how to use this grace. I didn't labor for it. I didn't work for it. Just out of your mercy, you gave to me what I never merited. You gave to me what I never desire to have. You deserve to have. You gave it to me, oh God. Father, help me to use pro make proper use of the grace. Help me to make you proper. Am I singing? Let me sing to your own glory. A lot of people have so frustrated the grace. You will see a politician who is married three, four wives. He go out, he say in a December, he will call for a party. His friends will be there. And then you see a colleague gospel singer. They will put on beer, a certain type of drinker, and they will be mocking the name of the Lord. With their concubine, they will come out and the born again child of God will come and be playing music for them. A thing that is made of all holy land is not spread abroad in the house of unbelievers. No, 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 no. Child of God, that is not the standard. Begin to say, God, in any way I have frustrated your grace. I am very, very sorry about that. You've been giving money to speak against somebody. You're frustrating the grace of God. Can you say, no, Lord, I repent of everything I've done. You are a child of God, but yet nobody can see you as a child of God. You're frustrating that grace. Pray now and say, God, show me your grace. I want to see more of your grace in my life. Pray right now. Ask him for more of the grace. More of his grace. More of favor. More of ability. More of the word of God. So that you got to know the word of God and deep into the word of God that the grace of God will abundantly be seen in your life. I pray for you right now for the mighty grace. Father, my brothers and sisters, the men of God, women of God who are listening now, all of us are praying for more grace. All of us are praying for cleansing. In all the way, we are frustrated the grace of God because of ego and arrogance in our life. Forgive us, O Lord. Cleanse us, O Lord. Purify us, O Lord. Wash us again and make us whole. And let your name be glorified in our life. Thank you for the great answer as you purify us, watch us, make us whole, sound and dedicated, and help us to know that you are King and God, and beside it, there is no Savior. Help us to love you more and walk under the power of your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I decree you will never frustrate the grace of God. You will not frustrate the grace of God. You will not fall short of the glory of God and grace of God. May of God will follow you. Let the Holy Ghost be your teacher. Let the Holy Ghost be your director. Anytime you want to go astray, let the Holy Ghost call you back to order and call me back to order and call us back to order and we shall stand for the most high God and we shall stand for the great grace of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, O Lord, 
for being so good and real. Hallelujah be your name for being everything good and real. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is worthy to be praised, exalted, and glorified. Thank you, Daddy, for all you've done as we worship you. Blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May God help you to be rich in grace and in glory. May God help you to serve him in purity, in holiness and righteousness. I tell you, there's no more time. There's no more time. You repent of all the secret sin. Turn to Jesus, confess all your sin. He will show you favor and he will show you mercy. Remember I said, please write four things you want God to do for you. Four, 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 you want God to do for you for the year. And we're going to pray together with you. May God keep you. May God bless you until I come your way again by next tomorrow, by the divine grace of God, we got to talk again. By then we're going to talk about ties of grace so that you know the grace where you're operating upon. You know the grace, the type of great Bible talked about, you know the grace you're walking in and his grace will keep you and bless you. Remain blessed and favor unto see again. Always remember that we're in a perilous time. No more time. Some people can sleep and no more wake up again. But when you sleep and don't wake up, may you wake up in glory. My prayer is that you will make heaven and Christ them shall be honored in your life. Faith be favored and blessed forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you.